Hi, I'm Derek Mazzoni, KEXP at KEXP.org, and this is a program we called Immigrant Song. I'm here with Awar Arunga from Kisume. Yeah, pleasure to meet you. And I'm here with Blitz the Ambassador from Ghana. Pleasure to be here. And we're talking about uh, the immigrant experience from an artist's perspective, specifically musicians. So can you tell me a little bit, Blitz, about yourself and how you came here? Well, I'm um, born again, raised in Ghana, Accra. Um, I was fortunate um, to come here for college. Okay. Um, so I came, um, went to Kent State University in Ohio, and um, but you know that was the parents' story because you know in Ghana I couldn't just be like, hey, I'm coming to be a rap star, like that was not even a concept. No. You know, so I I, I had to play the education card and let them know I was going to be a very respectable doctor or lawyer, something, you know, something they could agree with. And, um, you know, once I got here, it was about um, getting that degree because they needed to see that. But uh, most of my time was spent creating the platform okay. to be this artist that I am. Okay. What about you, Or? How'd you get here? Yeah, well, um, I remember seeing a Michael Jackson video for Thriller in Kisumu at the Nyanza Club. And that was amazing. That's what inspired Michael Jackson inspired me to come to the United States. Okay. So I pressured my parents. I was like, "Yo, we gotta go." My dad was um, the first black student body president at Shoreline in the University of Washington. Hmm. My mother was active in the B Black Panthers in Seattle, so um, they had some history here, and I knew that. So I was like, "Yo, when are we moving?" <laughs> okay. So I ended up here, you know, at an early age, around 10, 10 years old. And uh, my experience has been interesting. You know, lately I've been kind of peeping the scene, and it seems, um, you know, it's kind of, it, it makes you sad to see what's happening with, you know, the African community, the black community, you know, uh, the way, you know, many of us are being murdered, you know, uh, the unjust treatment of our people. Mm -hmm. And that really touches a hard string in me, you know. I think, uh, the idea of the United States is incredible on paper, mm -hmm. and um, it would be nice to see our generation change that. So as an immigrant here, I've never really considered myself an immigrant. My mother's from the States, my dad's from Kenya, but uh, uh, I was raised to be a global citizen. Okay. And I'd like to see you know the United States kind of evolve in the way they, the sincerity of the way they treat you know the black population. Do you put that in your music? Is that the intention in there? You know, like, for me, I think um, it's one thing to complain about the situation, but it's another thing to take action. So I'm trying to manifest that part of my journey. Okay. You know. And that is through what type? Because I've, I've done some research on you, and yeah. you fall in the, the, the jazz spectrum, um, which there's, there's a, a, a pretty strong history of, of that type of um, activism through music. Yeah. Definitely. For instance, um, I also play with a group. <clears throat> I'm a contributor for the Macklemore and Ryan Lewis yeah. project, and you know, every, I've done every show with them. And uh, I remember doing the American Music Awards, and we were in Florida. Mm -hmm. And I told Mac I wouldn't play. Like I'm not gonna do it. I can't play this. And we were on. It was the day that you know we get this huge award. And uh, I said we need to do something. Something needs to be said. You know, so on that day on air, he said, "You know what? I'm gonna say something about like what's going on in America right now, particularly with the Trayvon Martin case, yep. it being Florida." Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I try to I try to channel or, and use the platform in little ways. I'm people might not know it, but I'm constantly that is my that's my path. That's my you know that's my role is to let it know how I feel. Okay, you know, so. That day, he kind of like set, let it know, let it be known that you know, thousands of people die, you know, due to police violence, and you know, it was something that you know we pull on the the ancestors. So people like Malcolm X called the music the message. Mm -hmm. Martin Luther King said, "Injustice anywhere is a threat to justice mm -hmm. everywhere," and I truly believe that. So I try to pull on this realm of ancestral artistry, mm -hmm. and I pull from the ancestors and. The spirit speaks for itself. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, your parents played a role in in this intention work. I mean, it sounds like they you 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 came from a place where 
there were certain things expected of you. You didn't just like, I'm just going to go there, get a job, make some money, and then I'm fine. Which is often what we, we covered earlier, where it's like, you move to a place and your parents, okay, you're going to go there, you're going to get a, you're going to get an education, you're going to get a job, and you're going to uh, be better, yeah. you know, because you're entering this land like Michael Jackson where it's like you go to America the streets are paved with gold everything's going to be fine I'm an immigrant too and there's like a, a completely different perspective as soon as you get here but there is a population here that is just trying to assimilate that is just, not even assimilate that is trying to like work their way through this confusing landscape yes. and how do do you as an artist do you speak to the population or have you just gone like okay I'm a global citizen I'm going to speak to what's happening to me right now and if you're doing that, how do you bring that population in? How do you create this music to, like, yeah. your look, your the, the messaging, yeah. as we were discovering this in, in the interview, there is a going to be a generation that's going to be looking at you, like, like Strome is like, yeah. that's, I want to be that. Be that. There's something there. I completely agree. I mean, it, for, for a lot of people, um, they don't have... Um, as much they, they look for cues they look yeah. for cues of what is okay and what is cool and when you're growing up in a space where the African narrative is um, so very often a negative one where associating with Africa whether ideologically or as a physical space is the, the worst thing that you can be so one of the first things that a lot of us do is try to get the accent on point, try mm -hmm. to get the, the look on point, try to try to fit in and, and see Europe is, the, in my travels in Europe, I've, I've met um, a different immigrant experience there. Like in America, because the African-American population is pretty much from the inception of this country, there's a strong identity mm -hmm. that, that comes with, right? So a lot of African immigrants, when we arrive it's like, okay, now I can stand out and be that African guy who we know on the strata is lower, you know? Or I can find a way to blend in with this, this group that has already gone through a lot of struggle to claim identity. Then it makes it slightly easier for you. So that's why a lot of us gravitated towards artists that had an African leaning. So whether it was in the gears, the dashikis, the African medallions, yep. we were like, okay, that's a cooler version of us. Let's, let's go with that, you know? Native Tongues, for me, was like one of the first public enemy, like all of that. Um, tribe, De La Soul. I was like, wow, okay, you know, but an older me, you know, has realized that, you know, we are letting a huge part of what makes us a, a strong cultural force go. And a lot of it comes from self-understanding, at least in my opinion. Um, and understanding the wealth that we have in terms of look, sound, and ideology and, and finding ways to create art that can have people be emboldened. When they hear it, when they feel it, when they see it, they can say, okay, this is what I've constantly been trying to figure out. Okay, I wear suits all the time, but what happens when that suit is cut out of African fabric? Am I going to be brave enough to wear that? It's like, true. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's like these are things that we really consider. You know what I mean? It's not, it, it's, it's very true because a lot of it is the fear of being singled out, you know, and, and knowing that where you're from doesn't really have your back in terms of, uh, in terms of, in, in, in the idea of, of the dominant society. Like, you know, what, what is, what is Africa to them? You know, you know that you'll have to start from a very low place if you were going to have a dialogue about it. Most people's concepts of Africa are completely warped, you know? So the minute you open your mouth and you seem African, then all that stereotypical ways of looking at Africans is applied to you. Yeah, that's and most true. people, most people want to sidestep that. But I'm, I'm, I'm learning that, especially with this newer generation, we're getting more and more confident in, in, and perhaps the internet has a lot to do with it yeah. because information is so much more it's just stronger and we can pass information along much faster and a lot of a lot of Africans know that somebody like me exists but winning is so very critical for us as well like winning winning okay because when you win then people are like it, in a way it legitimizes what does winning mean to you winning is a plethora of things so like for some people it's like you know um, you know 
money. You you making know, hot he, music. He, making hot music, win, getting, getting okay. paid. Having doing friends it, who, right? who love to hang but and just we, having a community. But we that's talked about robust. that, like with k yeah. where he, you know, somebody came to him and said, like, you know, you can really win yeah. if you become more, yeah. less. If you yeah. become less African and more like Talib Kweli or yes. somebody that's yes. just like. That's not true. That's not true. I don't believe that. He, he wrote I, about I, it. it I, I feel that that's the first downfall. As soon as you water yourself down mm -hmm. nobody wants to pay attention to you you're just like everybody else but a lot of people do which which <clears throat> and, and, the, and the strange thing is and I, i'm agreeing with you that that is definitely the route to complete destruction the question though is like what makes us and i not i've those things have crossed everybody's minds like i know who i am i'm like very solid and very secure in my africanness and in my immigrantness and all these things but it took us all a very long time to arrive yeah, here, yeah, right? Absolutely. So, 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 so for years, I also wanted it. I was like, it's probably easier if I was just like a most deaf or talib. I mean, they're close enough, you know what I mean? And and but then in time, when you start to realize that your narrative and where you're from mm -hmm. is like we're not represented, and this is what has pissed me off and has 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 emboldened me and has lit a fire in me. I, is I, that, I would say most deaf. Look at look at talib <laughs> and most deaf. Yeah. Talib Kweli. Yep. Kweli, it means truth in Swahili. Yep. Most deaf, Yasin Bey. Yep. I mean, these are cats who, who are audacious about who they are. Yep. I would say that they go against the grain. They're not, you know, golden variety, run-of-the-mill yep. type of no, cats. No, 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 not at all, not at all. I, but it, I'm just using that as an example because it's like these are successful artists. Yep. Yeah. So if you're a producer and you're looking at Kanon, and, uh, you know, this is speculation on my part, but he did yep. write about it. It was like, you know, I have something here that I can make more money off of if it's a little less Ethiopian and a little more like most of Somali or, Kuali, yeah. or with that or Somali um, you're, dude, that is like that, that there's a known quantity there that this population of record buyers and mm -hmm. and and uh, absorbers of music would go for instead of this you know barefoot soldier that can, doesn't quite can I say sense. something really quick sure. I, I feel like and this is part of a much larger conversation right. which yeah. deals with which deals with self-confidence and I believe a lot of groups go through this I mean every immigrant that has arrived in this country is trying to figure out where they fit however what's unique about the African experience is the consistent bombardment of negative stereotypes mm -hmm. about us so whether it's like growing up with the commercials of like you know starving African kids yeah, you know yeah. and, and, and knowing that this is how the world perceives you I think that that's our first deficit that we're arriving with right and so the challenge that we're we're constantly facing is if we can create something that is cool enough that people like us, young, who are around the world, who are looking for that peace, then, and our hopes, our hopes are that it kind of compounds into a very, um, into identity that, you know, starts to influence our filmmaking, starts to influence our music, starts, so images of, of us winning, to me, is just images of you taking what has consistently been diminished mm -hmm. and 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 disregarded and saying holding it up and saying this is cool this yeah. is the new cool and more importantly selling out a venue doing that no yeah. no absolutely <laughs> and, but that but, but that goes back to yeah. my initial question you guys are musicians so you're part of a legacy of like music is the old internet this sure. people collaborated you look sure. at the history of like abdul ibrahim or fela kutu rima sakela they worked with other artists Fact. you know fela would not be fela unless there was you know the soul music yes. and Fact. funk and it's like i'm going to incorporate this Corporate. to create my own african identity Fact. and then the whole pan-african movement where Fact. it's like it doesn't matter whether you're kenya somalia ethiopia you're actually part of a continent Fact. but you needed to kind of like step out from that because yeah. it's like we just had the nile project in here and it's like music from the Nile, from, from Egypt going all the way down into Rwanda, mm. those cultures really didn't interact. They shared a waterway, but they didn't interact. Interesting. Absolutely. But, so, but you can interact here. As an immigrant, you mm. can actually interact with a plethora of other immigrants and a plethora of other Africans mm -hmm. because you're not in, McLeod was talking about this, you're not in the bullshit. Yeah. You know, it's like you can actually, you're not dealing with so much baggage here. It's a different set of baggage. I would yeah. disagree. I, I, I was watching a movie, Soul Power. Mm -hmm. James Brown, mm -hmm. Soul Power. Is, it, it covers the 65 fight with uh, Ali and George Foreman, Rumble in the Jungle. Mm -hmm. 
So around that concert, like this idea of soul power, you know, James Brown's the man who said, I'm black and I'm proud, black power. I mean, these audacious statements in a time where people would get killed for them, you mm -hmm, know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. the, the people who were so powerful, they owned two Learjets and owned radio stations. Mm -hmm. You know, KXP probably would have been owned by James Brown if he was born in Seattle, mm -hmm, you know, something mm -hmm, like that. Mm -hmm. But Ali was on the plane and they're covering all the behind the scenes stuff. Mm -hmm. Ali goes, my pilot's black, mm -hmm. the waitress is black, mm -hmm. Everybody, the doctors are black, the mm -hmm. lawyers are black, the president's black, the mm -hmm. MPs are black. And that's what, as an immigrant, I grew up with. Mm -hmm. I grew up with a different sense of awareness of mm -hmm. what was possible mm -hmm. as a black person. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Coming from Kenya, my all my uncles were the, e either doctors or mm -hmm. scientists or all of these things. Mm -hmm. Now, you're right in the in the way that once you come out of that, you start to become more aware and appreciate mm -hmm. where you come from and mm -hmm. the fact that there isn't this um, unfair handing out of jobs. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, it's not, that we, everybody gets a job. Everybody could get work. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. I, I really saw a lot of benefits. Like, going to Africa is really empowering because Fact. of that. Fact. Because you see, you see good, actually. Mm -hmm. you, it, it, it makes you feel stronger. You say, mm -hmm. man, these guys own businesses. These mm -hmm. guys are running a country. These guys, True. they have their own governments, their own states, their, mm -hmm. you know, they, they, all, all of these things that you don't really see living in Seattle, for instance. Mm -hmm. No, no, no I absolutely jump, true. I, but, I wanted to jump in ahead. real quick, just to um, speak on both what you guys are saying. Um, the, the reality is that when you live in a place, no matter how amazing, and no matter how much history and culture exists in that, it's hard to appreciate it fully. So for instance, I, I live in New York. I won't go to the, to the uh, uh, Statue of Liberty, but anybody who comes to visit me, that's one of the first things they wanna mm -hmm. go see, right? I lived in Ghana forever. I never went to any of the slave castles. Not until I had friends that came and they were like, we gotta go to the slave castles. That's when I went, right? So, but it's, it's part of human nature. Like when you were in a space, it's hard to fully see it and appreciate it, yeah. right? When I came to Kent State as a, a student, and this is where I, I was super appreciative, I said I'm, it, was a, it was a huge privilege to come for college, though that was never my plan. But that's when my ideas of Pan-Africanism were born. Like, I'd read some books, I knew who Kwame Nkrumah was, I knew who Mal I knew Malcolm X had come to Ghana, I knew Du Bois had died in Ghana and was buried there, but I never really knew the significance of that. Mm -hmm. Now, as a college student, and studying Pan-Africanism in Kent State, the, like the, the whitest of the white in terms of America, yeah. middle America, I was like, get the fuck out of here. I mean, I w that, was, that was when I saw um, the possibilities in a diaspora. So my entire music today and how it has connected Brazil and Brooklyn mm -hmm. and Accra all came from landing in Ohio. Strange, but true, right? And so, and so I'm saying this to say that it's all perspective. Some people are able to stay in Ghana and get this very same perspective based on family, based on the books that were around them, mm -hmm. based on the conversations they had. Some of them had to leave. Like for me, I had to leave to, to witness it from a, a larger perspective and realize that, you know, all our one struggles are, are, are similar and two, all the solutions are tied within the diaspora. They're, that's it, yeah. they're linked. Like. Um, I, I remember being a kid, and I, the reason I play trumpet today is because of a Tusker commercial, mm -hmm. a beer. <laughs> and there was this silhouette of a guy playing the trumpet. He was playing Take Five, Dave Brubeck. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is so cool. He had on a hat just like this. <laughs> and he's just playing. You're the Tusker like yeah, that yeah, now? Yeah, yeah, just <laughs> playing that joint. And I was like, Grandma. When I came to the States, I found one in her basement. I was like, went to school for the first day, and they offered the instrument. I said, what? Seriously? Okay. But, I wouldn't have been able to find a trumpet in my grandmother's basement in Kenya, sure. but I wouldn't have found the love yeah. for the instrument had I not been there either. Uh, but I wouldn't have been able to play that if I was... It, it, coming to the States allowed me to have one of those trumpets in my grandmother's basement to play. Yes. So they're linked, like it's all linked. It's, you can't remove one from the other. It's like a hand, each one's a finger. Yeah. Without the thumb, you... It's true. So one of the things that's been driving this entire conversation with various immigrant musicians is that A, being away allowed me to play. I might have been playing in my country of birth, mm -hmm. but probably not. 
probably like a set of circumstances allowed me to actually do this. Like there was something about within me that came out. Um, because when you go to a new place, you have a different set of energies around you. And you're anonymous right. too. Yeah, you can. But it's like, but it's going back to that, that question of like, do I assimilate? Do I try to fit in? Do I change my name? Do I lose the accent? Do I lose the clothing? Or do I take it on and let that be my my energy? Let that be the thing that I'm presenting. I think for a lot of us, it's been a, it's been a consistent evolution, right? From arriving at first and being the only one African guy in my entire business department in Kent, right? And like all questions relating to Africa getting bombarded with them. And you're like, damn, I, you know, but you realize that you find understanding out of that and you find that you have to do some more digging yourself, mm -hmm. right? And then in time, you start to become more confident. At least I'm, I'm speaking t specifically about my trajectory. Mm -hmm. You become more, more confident in the information that you're gathering and then it starts to manifest in your work. And I think that overall, the, the thing that I've, and it's the even more tricky thing that I'm beginning to see now. And my all my albums have kind of been this very conversation we're having. Stereotype was me arriving and having to deal with that. Native Son was me trying to wrap, you know, this evolution. Afropolitan Dreams becomes this, now I think I'm here. But now the challenge becomes, now I return home. And I'm trying to be just like one of the people at home now, mm -hmm. right? That's a whole nother set right. of, of, because no, I'm not. I'm kind of like this guy who, I'm not fully Brooklyn and I'm not fully Accra, right? So now I'm home and I'm trying to come up with ideas and people are looking at me like, we'll never work here. Like, did you think about X, Y, Z? Because I'm thinking it's, you know, it's Brooklyn, you just show up and you get it done. No, it's Accra. It's like there are hundreds of reasons why you can't get it done yeah. or, or you can get it done this other way, right? And so like, I think that now the conversation for a lot of us is how do we return and influence home the way the world has influenced us? And I'll say this, like in my study of Pan-Africanism or, or just in general, uh, the black diaspora, is finding that Kwame Nkrumah, for instance, he wouldn't be Kwame Nkrumah without his time spent at Lincoln University, mm -hmm. being influenced by Du Bois. That means Ghana wouldn't be independent the way it was independent. Yeah. We wouldn't influence the rest of the continent the way we did, right? Mm -hmm. So you're looking at this one guy who could have just been the student in Ghana who would have continued, but his urgency that he returned with, and I feel like that's where we're at now. A lot isn't working at home. And a lot of us are trying to figure out how this global landscape. I mean, we've been to so many countries, mm. absorbed. Now it's even bigger than New York and Ghana. Now it's, oh, snap. When I was in Brazil, what did I learn? When I was in Japan, what did I learn? You know what I mean? And so you're looking at all these things. And now when you return home, there's this urgency because you're like, I, I want to change something. I want to change something now. You know, because I've seen how certain things work globally. And I, I feel like that's that's an interesting point. Uh, to that point, I would say I've found that there's a lot more opportunity in Africa than we give credit for. Fact. For instance, um, you know, I land in Nairobi and I have a meeting with a television producer and they're like, yo, you need to produce a couple episodes. Or, you know, uh, the, the, the television station knows I'm in town so they're like yo we need you on the show or the radio station and, and mm -hmm. I'm like constantly running all these yeah. places come to Seattle it's like <laughs> I'm the Macklemore trumpet player yeah. you see what I'm saying yeah. so I, as an immigrant I found a lot of value yeah. in that my parents named me the way they named me you know what I'm saying so like I can't escape who I am mm -hmm. you know yeah. so I actually where people would see oh Africa is you know they're, they're behind the times, blah, blah, blah. I see they're ahead of the times. No, Things are changing. Time. They're Completely. on the cusp. Completely. Um, the, the diaspora, the way music is changing yeah. things. Right. Projects that are going on are really revolutionary. Like, and the fact that they have that many countries on the continent alone, yeah. so many languages and, and, and the markets, yeah. the, the, the Chinese influence and, and 
all these developments taking place within infrastructure is incredible, you know? So uh, where people would think, oh, you go there and it's not really going to be that popping, mm -hmm. I see like, man, I need to get out of here so I could go yeah. get it popping in Africa. Oh, you so, know what I'm saying? So I want to finish on that. On, on that. It's a different Africa. It's a mm -hmm. different kind of perspective. There's yeah. still this, like, this, this, um, um, the idea of the the noble African mm -hmm. stuck in time. It's like mm -hmm. the academy, the ethnomusicology. Mm -hmm. The reality is that the music coming in Africa, the, if you go to Kinshasa, you go to Johannesburg, you go to Lagos, your mind is blown. Mm -hmm. These are very powerful, dense cities that are dealing with problems from a very different way. If you look at the music that's coming out, it's electronic music, but it's a different kind of perspective on it. Some yeah. of the development that's coming out, the, the websites that are coming yeah. out, yeah. everything is mobile, the, the way music is shared yeah. throughout. But it is, you're, you're hearing, it's coming here. It's coming to the West and then going back into Africa. Dead. It's like you're not going to go, you're not going to be listening to music from Lagos if you're living in Nairobi. That's just not, you're not even going to be listening to music You'd from, be surprised. It's happening. Yo, let me tell you. It, it, I was, like beyond, I just was going to okay, say then, something. Was, it, it, we've evolved my time, beyond that point My time, now. my time, because I was just in Tanzania and Kenya like yeah, a, few, a few months <laughs> ago, and I was amazed at how much West African music is being played in the east like literally every bar had like nigerian music okay. and all that now 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 the thing is it because of the television industry in lagos i, I, th I think industry? i think it's it's a, it's everything industry it's, it's, it's the fact that industry okay. and people are moving at such a, a rate um, information is moving at such a rate and before the internet this is when i feel like we were at our most handicapped because I mean, there were, there were the language barrier between Anglophone, Francophone, and then our our mm -hmm. tribal languages made it very difficult for things Phone to Phone calls were impossible to make because they were so expensive. Yeah, yeah, now we have yeah. WhatsApp, we have we got uh, everything. All, all these apps that you could call your family and yeah, friends for yeah, free, yeah. do deals. Yeah. Technology is revolutionized so the way we communicate. Information yeah. is traveling, and I think that now, and on the real, and that's kind of what I'm saying, is that we are having to catch up on our return because the it's it's it is yeah. it is the evolution that has happened and this is where i, I call it the humble return you know what i mean because a yeah. lot of us return like i've been around the world like i'm bliss the ambassador like <laughs> you should listen to me because i know no like sit down and listen you know what i mean because because this is what has so much has changed since you've been gone and so much has progressed in a way that you're not even privy to living here because again like mobile money this is stuff that you know is just now catching on with banks yeah, yeah. Yeah. mobile yeah. money has been moving on in Africa forever so like again there, there's so many things that I feel like now the key element and, and this is kind of my hope is that a lot more um, time is spent between what we do globally and what we do locally and when we return we return as listeners and figuring out how we can add little pieces and not set, and a lot of people who, and see this is what happened in Ghana. Uh, about 2008, the economy just boomed, right? And everything was just going good. And all these people left their good jobs here and flocked home, right? Okay, now it's, it's Ghana, so things go up and things go down, right? Like anywhere else in the world. But the challenge, however, is that a lot of people who left here left without doing the, the knowledge, is what I call it. Without saying, okay, this is how the local, so they thought they could just approve their awesome job or their awesome business and just set it up in a Accra mm -hmm. and it works. No, and so when the economy turned, a lot of them had to fly back. Now they're returning to less than they left here, yeah. right? So the, the key thing that I'm learning at least, and this is where the art is so important, in my opinion at least, is, is returning and creating space. Um, so every concert that I have back home, there's a, there's a conversation that comes with it. So there's an artist talk in, in, in a very open space that a lot of people can participate in. So I learn while imparting the little that I've learned globally. And I think that our chances of, 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 of hybriding, because no immigrant lives here and wants to be here forever. Now that was our parents' dream. Yeah. You know what I mean? When they came, they were like, this is good. Not I, even. You know not, what I, mean? I, I don't know. I mean, I mean I, 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 when I say our parents, I don't mean but in, uh, uh, individual, but I'm saying generally that generation, because things, they left things so bad. Yeah, they you know? never expected they to be better. To be better, exactly. But we are born in a time where we're like, and again, because we're so in touch, yeah. we're back home, 
Like back home, like you were saying, the phone calls that your parents would make back home right. were impossible. The now flights you're are cheaper. The, you could go from is cheaper. one city to the next. There's Yo, more airlines. Like you can look on your phone and be like, what? They just did what? Yeah. In Ghana? So I'm, I'm feeling like we're at a place that all of us have to look back. Now the question is, how does that happen? You know? But that's your job now. As yeah. artists, you need to assimilate that and then present it to the population. That's what you, as, by calling yourself artists, that's kind of your, that's what you need to do. Yeah. Because that is an experience <coughs> that needs to be translated. It needs to be like alchemically manifest into something that the next generation can understand in one form or another. Exact. Okay. Or, Pleasure. Blitz, Pleasure. let's do this again. Thank you, yes, absolutely. Derek Mazzoni. This is Immigrant Song. Discover great music at kexp.org.